Good morning, Mammoth. I'm Ashley Pacifico. And I'm Michelle Rosenhaus. Welcome back to all of our viewers. This is our first time back at it since spring break. And Ashley, did you have a good time? Well, I have to tell you, Michelle, I, for spring break, took one of my best friends and we went to Florida to visit my aunt and uncle in Fort Lauderdale. I'm jealous. And I'm not gonna lie, it was an amazing time. Um, but it's kind of crazy. It's spring break central down there and I didn't- Is it? Yeah, Fort Lauderdale. Like, um, I'm gonna say this because I haven't told anyone yet, but there was some kid from Monmouth five feet away from me on the beach. Really? Yeah, and I'm not gonna tell you who you are, but it's just weird when I see you in the dining hall now. I'm like, wow, I saw you on the beach five feet away from me, like out of all places on the beach. And you didn't say hi or anything? No, and I'm not gonna tell you why I didn't say hi. <laughs> But there was a reason, and I, I don't know you still, but I hope you had a great time. I had a great time. So did you do anything really super exciting or just? Um, I held a baby alligator. Ew. Yeah, yeah, it was kind of weird. Every time I'm in Florida, I eat a baby alligator. Oh. <laughs> well, that's kind of sad. Uh, and also I'm a vegetarian, so I wouldn't be eating um, alligator of any sort. fish. Isn't it kind no, of a fish? We're not gonna. <laughs> no, no, Michelle. Ignore the fact that I just said that. <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> um, all right, Kathy Lee, calm down. <laughs> but uh, no, wow. so we did that, that and bad. I went bowling. My uncle is like a real kind of family guy, and it, <laughs> no, it's really weird because his kids are so much older now. Uh, he took us bowling, and I was pretty darn good. Proud of you. Thank you. All right, well, I think you had a much more eventful <laughs> and warm spring break than I did. Well, I'm sorry. I think you might be right on that <laughs> one, but we have a really exciting show for you today. It is packed with lots of fun, including our roast, some news, and our advice for all of our loyal viewers. This is your AM with A and M. Well... story, a sad story that actually just broke the news. Um, our, a Buck Wild star, Shane Gandy, mm -hmm. uh, was found dead in K Kanawha County in West Virginia, where I believe the show is filmed, yeah. uh, 21 years old. The police were contacted about a disabled vehicle, and uh, when the police arrived on the scene, they found Shane dead in the car with uh, his uncle and another passenger. Um, the vehicle was like stuck in the mud. It was kind of a very, very strange situation. And now they're talking about it, them dying maybe from potential uh, carbon monoxide poisoning. It's interesting because on the show, I don't know if you've seen Buckwild, but they go mudding all the time. Right. And they do get stuck in the mud a lot, but you never really see it being something that's so dangerous. Mm -hmm. I mean, you see it as dangerous, obviously, because they're falling out of the cars and, blah, and whatnot, but that's right. pretty unreal with the carbon monoxide. I mean, it seems like things still aren't quite figured out yet. Mm -hmm. uh, this is what's, you know, the latest information that's right. out there. Um, I find it interesting, not to say that I didn't believe it at first, but mm -hmm. because the news broke on April 1st, which is, of course, oh. April Fool's Day, um, knowing the nature of the show and them being so carefree and goofy and whatnot, I had automatically assumed that this is a hoax, you know, just right. like, oh, Little Wayne died or, you know, so-and-so died. The everyone's, Twitter verse. everyone's dead yeah. at some point in their life, coincidentally. <laughs> um, but so I thought this was a, a joke, but no, I mean, statements, this is all real, unfortunately. So, wow. no, our, our condolences go out to his family out in West Virginia. Yeah. Uh, moving on to our next story. Actually, Ryan Cabrera is back on the scene. Yeah. And he actually has a new tattoo of Ryan Gosling's face. So we got a little Ryan on Ryan going on. It is, and I mean, I wouldn't mind seeing Ryan Gosling's <laughs> face every day when I look down, but you know, so that's a little bit much. Really strange. I didn't think that these guys had some sort of connection to each other. Mm -hmm. And the meaning behind it is actually really, really funny. Um, Ryan and his friends play this game called Tattoo Roulette, where basically they pick a random tattoo for each other mm -hmm. and don't let the person receiving the tattoo find out what it is until after it's done. Interesting. Would you ever w play this with your friends? Would you ever let your friends pick out a random tattoo? You know for what, you? Ashley? I'm gonna let you pick okay. something. Oh. 
And I'm just gonna just tattoo it on my body. I think that's a great plan. I mean, see, the thing is, I'm the nice friend. I'd be like, oh, this is great. This is great. I don't know if I could. Tattoos are permanent. And I think, I believe it's on his calf. It's on his so calf. So that's kind of a noticeable spot every time you wear shorts. Shorts, the beach, anything. That's pretty nuts. I don't, I don't know how I feel about that. I mean, I like both of the Ryans. I'm not a hater. Um, mm -hmm. I'm a fan. I think I've seen random ru uh, roulette tattoos before, and they've been a lot a lot worse. It could have been worse. Scary right. cats and um, clown faces. So <laughs> I think he lucked out with Ryan Gosling. I think so, too. We actually have our, um, our viral video of the week this week, though, yes. that we'd like to get to in kind of honor of all of the gay marriage things going on lately, uh, we'd like to show you the video from collegehumor.com. And it kind of just shows you, I think, I believe it's called Gay Men Will, will marry, marry Your, your Girlfriend. Your Girlfriend. Yes. So check it out. Americans are becoming more comfortable with the idea of gay marriage, seeing it as both a moral and civil rights issue. But there are many out there who are still fighting against the cause. And as gay men ourselves, we would just like to say to those people, Fine. Black. Keep marriage between a man and a woman. And in response, we will marry your girlfriends. We'll marry your girlfriends. What? You don't think we could? We'd be the best husbands ever. Have you seen us? <laughs> we are rich. So, this video I find to be absolutely hysterical because guys are always like, you know, we don't want to marry our girlfriends, we're pressured in, blah, blah, blah. And I believe that was the video, this was a response video to a, a video made prior. I believe so. About um, guys saying, you know, like, now we have to do this once we're married and that, blah, blah, blah. This is why we don't commit, whatnot. <laughs> this is, this is, um, basically the gay's response in saying, listen, mm -hmm. you at least have the right to get married. So we will end up marrying your girlfriends if, if you know, you don't support us. And it's hilarious because they kind of go on, you should absolutely see the video if you haven't. They go on and just talk about how they can please your wife and be a better husband than, than any straight man. Would be. Mm -hmm. And I, I think it's so funny because I have a lot of, um, homosexual friends, at, like guy friends, right. and they fit it to a T. Yeah, exactly. Um, so let's get back into our entertainment topics for right now. Back into a story that I am <laughs> so, so, so excited about. Well, you know, I have a little bit of a soft spot in my heart. You do have a large place in your heart for okay. these boys. Okay, a large place <laughs> in my heart for the Jonas Brothers. Guys, they're back on tour after Three years, they are coming back on tour this summer, starting off in Chicago. Um, <laughs> they just released their new song called Pom Poms. I'm not gonna lie, it's not my favorite. It's not my favorite, it's kind of interesting, a little, a little teeny boppy, you know, yeah. I really, I expected them to kind of grow a little bit more, but this is only the first single that they've okay. released yet. I want them to branch out. I want them to not be teeny boppers anymore. I know. Because their fan base is, People our age, I used to love the Jonas Brothers. I know. Her keyword is used to. Used Mine to. is still. Used to. <laughs> no, <laughs> but um, this photo I want to share with you guys because this marked the day. I waited online at like, like two in the morning to meet them, and that was the day. How precious. Anyway, so back to my, <laughs> back to this story. They're going to be in town around us for all you Mammoth Jonas Brothers fans uh, at PNC on July 25th. So if you're around, come out and see the Jonas Brothers. I'll be there. I'm pretty excited about that too. Actually, our next story is about Joan Rivers making cruel comments to Adele. Ashley, why don't you tell me a little bit about what she said because I heard they were a little bit uncalled for. Yeah, so I don't know why. Joan Rivers, yes, she's a comedian, so her job is to basically poke fun at all the celebrities out there. But I think at some point in time, you just go too far. Mm -hmm. So Joan Rivers just finds it absolutely hilarious to you know, say jokes to Adele, like she should add fried chicken to her song, Rolling in the Deep. 
So that is a little, a lot cruel. That's that's, that's very brutal. Cruel. Um, I think attacking someone personally about their weight, it, you know, it'd be one thing if you attack Taylor Swift and you were like, oh my God, all she does is sing about her love life, get right. over it, you know. Something like that is Especially different. Especially with Adele, who's so confident and kind of just a sweet, sweet person. Right. To go out and attack her about her weight, which is something that she has made known and clear that she doesn't want to change. She has it's no desire. so uncalled for. And so Joan was being interviewed uh, recently, and she was asked to address her prior comments about Adele. Mm -hmm. And she wrote, she's a chubby lady who's very, very rich, and she should just calm down or lose weight. She wanted an apology, so I took an ad out on her. Took it, we'll say, aka Tush. <laughs> I said, you're, uh, you're not fat, and then I had room for a lot of other ads. Adele is beautiful and successful and has, what, 100 million? Let's face reality. She's fat. I don't know what having 100 million dollars and being fat, how that kind of I don't really know, but works. I think this is going to give Joan Rivers a little bit of a bad buzz for right now. Absolutely. Um, that's actually all the time that we have for this week's AM Roast. But for our next segment, we wanted to update everyone a little bit on what's going on at Monmouth within the next week. If you are a student employee, listen up. April 7th through April 13th is Student Employee Appreciation Day. Week, rather. Uh, <laughs> student employment will have all sorts of uh, events with food and prizes to thank the student employees for all of their hard work that they've put in over the year. For more information, go to your place of employment on campus and pick up your invitation. Last year, I was fortunate enough to win a $25 iTunes gift card, and all I did was stop by a table in the student center and picked out of this mystery prize box. Wow. And it's as simple as that. So uh, you're definitely not going to want to miss this event. And it's great. It's fun. Wow, Ash, that actually sounds like a really fun week. More about what's going on on campus. In the upcoming week on April 10th, the Comworks will be hosting a poetry slam on Shadow Lawn between 2.30 and 4.30 p.m. Well, that's exciting. I mean, if you're interested in poetry or even if you don't write poetry yourself, mm -hmm. Go out and, and the Comworks events are so much fun to go to. They're actually really, really funny and yeah. really enjoyable. The group of people that, you know, put it on Comworks, they're so, characters, the yeah. personalities, it's, it's a sight it's to see. So that's really great. Um, well, on April 12th, you better grab your sneakers, Michelle, because <laughs> the Institute for Global Understanding will be hosting their fourth annual Global Understanding Convention 5K. 3.1 miles. You can right. register in front of Wilson Hall between 1.30 and 2.30 p.m. Uh, to participate in the 5K walk run. And this is to raise money for the Courtney Rose Foundation. Now, if you don't know about the Courtney Rose Foundation, it was founded by Moms University employee Kristen Gillette in order mm -hmm. to raise funds for the pediatric cancer research. Uh, there's also a suggested donation of $10 for all those interested in participating. Uh, and every one of the first 100 people to register will receive a free t-shirt. That sounds great. It's, that's a great event to go to. 5K, like. you know, it's not going to take too long out yeah. of your day. You get a free t-shirt, and it goes for a good cause. Speaking of running and grabbing your sneakers, uh -oh. in Mammoth Sports, Andrew McGee earned his third straight NEC Pitcher of the Week. McGee is a left-handed pitcher, and the last pitcher to win this three times was in 2004 in Quinnipiac with Pat Egan. So wow. this is a huge kind of feat. Um, he has allowed just a single run in his last 31 innings pitched, and he has really shown his strength by not allowing a run after the sixth inning at all this season. So let's hope that this Hawk can keep his streak going. Wow, Michelle, what would I do without you, you know, keeping me <laughs> updated on all these mom sports things? I gotta keep you up on the sports, you know? That's so interesting. Unfortunately, we have to take a very quick break, but when we come back, we have a very special segment with a surprise guest. Stay tuned.
the healthy children eat well and move a lot. And move a lot. And move a lot. Eat well and move a lot. 60 minutes of physical activity a day and eating well can help get your child healthy. So keep them active and eating well every day. Skip a rope Saturday, freeze tag Friday, tap dance Thursday. Get ideas. Get involved. Get going at letsmove.gov. That's letsmove.gov. Over 13 million people are affected by famine, war, and drought in the Horn of Africa. When you hear about suffering on this scale, you feel powerless. But there's hope, because saving lives doesn't take a lot. It just takes a lot of us. Text a donation of $10, but do more than donate. Forward the facts to everyone you know. Forward from our site. Forward on Facebook. And forward on Twitter. We are the relief. Welcome back to Good Morning Mammoth. Today we have a little something extra planned for our viewers. We have Anna Chamberlain, a student here at Mammoth, who would like to teach us how to dance. This should be interesting. Welcome to the show, Anna. <laughs> so what do you have in store to teach us today? Well, today what I'm going to show you is just a few basic steps that I learned because I'm currently in ballroom uh, two. It's a half semester course. I took ballroom one uh, at the beginning of the semester, and this is the salsa. So okay. we're just going uh -oh. to do uh, the first basic pattern. Wait, Anna, bef before we, we start. So this was from section one or section two? Are both. we learning advanced material this here? No, 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 advanced, both. I'm nervous. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. It's from both. Okay. I learned it in ballroom one, and we're just reinforcing it in ballroom two. Okay. All right, so just... Just to start off, um, what we're going to be doing is the salsa, and we're just going to be doing the first basic part of it. Okay. And with it, we're just going to do the first pattern. So what we're going to do is, is that in all ballroom dances, the women always start with their right foot. And we're going to go back. So we're just simply going to go back, replace your left foot, put, replace your weight in your left foot, and then bring your right foot back. And then um, what you do is, is that for the second part of it is that you're going to do basically the same thing, but you're going to put your left foot forward. So what you do is left, replace, together. Just like, you guys are experts. So easy. Wow. Look okay. I don't know the jinx it, but okay. I think I <laughs> okay. have it so far. So, and what we're going to do is we're going to do that again, and we're going to do it in counts of four, and we're going to snap on the four and the eight. So just, Let me just, just say I can't snap, so I'm going to fake it. All right. You're going to fake snapping. Fake All right. Okay. We'll do it. All right. So that's just to kind of get into the rhythm of it. So okay. we're going to start in five, six, seven, eight, and one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's so that's basically the first part. How was that? Oh. I thought that was okay. <laughs> I know, and you're doing a pretty good thing as you're barefoot. I had to. I was, you know, I was rocking the flops. I, I didn't realize that I would need my ballet shoes today. It's okay. okay. It's perfectly okay. okay. I'm in, I'm in Converse, so it's fine. All right. So what you're gonna do is that's the first part. You're gonna do that twice. Yes. So in the in one count of that pattern is the right, and then the left. And then that's one. Okay. And then okay. you're going to do that again. And then the second part of it, what it is, is that you're going to go to the side. You're going to do a side step. And with that, you're going to take your right foot mm -hmm. and you're going to shift and you're going to go like that, basically. Ooh. Oh. Yeah. And you have to make sure. I know I just did that, but you have to make sure that you keep your feet flat because that's you don't want to point your toes. So and then you're going to come back and then you're going to do the same thing with the left. So you're going to go like that. Okay. And now. Prior to this, have you had any prior dancing experience? Um, I did do a little bit of dance when I was younger, when I was a little kid, but then I hated the costumes and all the sequins and everything, so I decided to stop. <laughs> hey, whatever works with you. This is making me wish I didn't stop in the sixth grade. Uh, <laughs> I stopped as well, and I'm, I'm really regretting it. Yeah, but, but the thing is, though, <laughs> is that I honestly... Before I took this, when I was on the dance floor, it was embarrassing, I'm not going to lie. But uh, the professor who teaches it, Professor Young, he's actually really helpful. And he, you know, even if you aren't quite sure what to do, he will instruct you so you can pick it up really easily. Okay. Do you guys have partners? Uh, yes, we do. Uh, it, we do do rotations. Okay. Um, what is it that uh, sometimes the girls outnumber the guys? Because it seems that the girls like to learn ballroom more than guys. Huh. <laughs> That's really weird. I wouldn't have imagined that, actually. <laughs> yeah. So what is that we'll usually do a rotation. Either the girls will go down or the guys will go down in the line. And um, then 
That way we have the opportunity to learn how to dance with each other and just kind of gain that confidence when approaching someone how to dance so it's not so awkward. Okay. All right, well, let's, let's, let's get go. to it okay. again. So what you're going to do is you're going to do the side step three times. You're going to go right together like that, back oh, together man, like that, that, then right again. All right, so we'll start from the basics. We'll do the two basics and the side step. Oh, goodness. Here we go. All right, ready? And five, six, seven, eight, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Five, six, seven, eight. You guys are doing good. Now do the base side steps together. Four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm so eight. uncoordinated. <laughs> Me too. And then like that. You know, you guys are doing good. It takes a while to pick up. When I first did the classes a couple times, I was all over the place. I'm adding arms. I look like I'm flying. No, it's I don't okay. really know what I'm doing. Like it's I okay. I want to add some sass to it. Yeah, you yeah. can add some sass to it. Oh, it's okay. a little shimmy. Yeah, you have a little shimmy too. Do you lose the salsa effect though? Like, is that? Oh, uh, yeah, the shimmy's more of a samba thing, but you can do it oh. if you want, you know, when you're on the dance That'll floor. That'll be another lesson for us to learn. Yeah, another lesson for another day. Now, after that, after you do the three side steps, you're going to do a spin. But with the spin, you're actually not physically spinning, but you're actually just shifting your weight oh. as you pivot. So what it is is, is that I'm going to start from the side steps. Okay. So you're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, and then you shift your weight and you go like that. Oh, geez. Oh, geez, yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So, pivoting. so we'll do that again. So we'll just do the turn this time. So you're just going to kind of place your weight on your right foot. Okay. And then you're actually not going to physically move your foot. You d Well, like you're not going to move it from like this imaginary line that it's on right now. Right. So you're just going to kind of shift like that. Very okay. good. She's a natural. Oh, yeah. Wow. Congratulations, <laughs> Michelle. Cool. No, you're Thanks. good too. No, Pity. you're doing, you're Pity. doing, you're doing okay. fine. All right, let's all right. go. All right, so let's take it all the way from the top. Oh, so no. oh, we're going to do the two basics, right. the three side steps, and then we'll do the spin. Hopefully we don't hit each other because this is a little bit of a small all right. stage. All we right. got this. Okay, ready? So we'll start in five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four. Five, oh, six, snaps seven. this time. There we go. And now that's the second basic. And we do side step. I'm going to pretend like I you didn't got it. You got it. It's okay. No, it's okay. <laughs> All right, that's the. And then you Should we do... get spin? Spin. There you go. Oh, geez. oh yeah. See, and then you add a little, like. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Oh, oh, hey. hey. <laughs> I think you saw something over there. So that's, so that's basically how you do it. And then depending on the tempo of the music and then, you know, with your partner, you can add in, you know, you can do an extra spin if you want to. Right. You can do, you know, two more basics if you just kind of want to, you know, be close to your partner or anything like that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, what can I say? That's um, interesting. Yeah, so the, that's basically the beginning part of it. And then obviously with a partner, you can do a little bit more advanced. I would show you the other parts, but unfortunately we didn't. I couldn't find a partner today, but, um, but yeah, that's basically it. And then now you guys know. I mean, I feel like with a little bit more practice, Michelle and I could easily just totally nail that performance. I think yeah. for next show, we should prepare a little dance something. together or just something. Like a little like dancing with like the stars a little, routine? Yeah. I think that'd be hey, fun. If All you right. guys need you a coach, us. I can help you. Awesome. I think people would love to see that. Just, just dancing with Anna yeah. week after week. I'll be here if you need me. Awesome. Well, Anna, thank you so much. Thank you thank for having you me. Thank you for teaching us this dance. It actually was so much fun, and we'd actually like to take a quick break. But when we come back, we'll have more fun activities for all of our viewers. I just moved in with this family 
and it's embarrassing. The little one, he likes to go outside and crawl around in the giant litter box. I don't know what he's doing. I mean, I was born and I knew how to use the litter box. Look at that. That's disgusting. Oh, poop already. You're making me nervous. Oh, okay, I can't look at this anymore. I really hope he grows out of this, for his sake. For those dealing with the daily struggles of caring for a loved one, we hear you. That's why AARP created a community with experts and other caregivers to help us better care for ourselves and the ones we love. Welcome back. I must say that dance really taught me a lot. I'm definitely going to use that one when I go out. I, I'm excited. <laughs> I like that. You know, I would probably pay money to see you do that in public. Uh, I think I, yeah. But for now, <laughs> let's not get crazy. Stick to your chair and let's get right back into things uh, with our AM advice. So in this segment, we share some questions that viewers have and instruct them on what to do as best as we can. So for our first question, my friends keep on playing pranks on me. At first it was all in good fun, but now it's just getting frustrating. What do I do to retaliate? Oh my gosh. I know. I hate pranks. If anyone ever were to prank me, like, I would probably just be like, we're not friends anymore, honestly. I, I don't know. See, I'm real good at dealing with pranks, but there's a point where it's like, you took it too far, mm -hmm. so then you need to retaliate. So I feel where this person is coming from. Yeah, I mean, I guess it depends what the prank was. I mean, if it was, if it was the saran wrap around the car thing, mm -hmm. I'd be real upset. Well, then you just retaliate with toilet paper. You know? Right, or post-its. Ooh, post-its are Yeah, good. I mean, that's a little time-consuming, but I've seen that in real life, and it looks cool. I must <laughs> say, this April Fool's, I got a little bit pranked. Yeah, what happened? Um, well, my room was kind of... My roommates were involved, but it wasn't them. They just let them in my house. Oh, And I okay. had 140 balloons in my bathroom. I had 100 filled water cups on my floor in my bedroom, and then I had post-it notes all over my walls. So every time I walked... I would knock over water, and then I couldn't get into my bathroom oh my God. without there. I couldn't even open the door without the balloons. So then when I let the balloons out, the water spilled. It was just a disaster. Please. I'm still cleaning. <laughs> Please tell me that nothing, nothing touched anything electrical. No, we're all good to go. Uh, okay. Yeah. Oh, my so goodness. So I suggest retaliation is, is best. Re retaliation, <laughs> as long as no harm can be done of in the making of this prank battle. Right. Uh, well, I'm sorry. I mean, that's our best answer for you. <laughs> Go for it. Just be safe. Uh, so next up, a viewer asks, how do I tell my roommates to respect my decision on changing my lifestyle to incorporate more uh, workouts and healthy eating? Uh, ever since they say I went on a diet, uh, they said that I've changed and keep trying to sabotage and they keep trying to sabotage me with foods that I'm trying to distance myself from. That's interesting. Um, I feel like that's hard, but you kind of need to keep your distance. If you are on that diet and it's a healthy diet and you're yeah. just working out and you're still eating foods, just avoiding certain things, you can't really be pushed into that. It's hard when you get tempted with, say, McDonald's or chocolate bars. But, right. you know, if they are good friends, they'll let you have that. And honestly, like, if it gets to a point where it's like, you know, enough is enough say something be yeah. like listen do you not want to see me succeed like here's my goals and here's here's my reasoning for it like maybe mm -hmm. they don't understand why you're doing it uh and maybe they think it's unrealistic or whatnot so i mean if you want to do it for yourself which that's what you should be right. doing go for it I but agree. um don't let don't let them sabotage you i agree completely i think that's our best answer mm -hmm. um our last question comes from a student who is struggling with roommate's cleanliness my roommate is one of my best friends, but lately she's been really letting her messiness take over. I'm going nuts in this little dorm room. What, what do I do to get her to clean up? Well, I've been <laughs> very fortunate to not have to live with a roommate for the past two years. Hmm. Um, so the only person I'm battling with cleanliness is myself. Um, that's so much easier. that's much easier. <laughs> um, if she's one of your good friends, I mean, she's your roommate and you can't stand it. 
she, first of all, I hope she notices that like <laughs> you're getting a little upset over this scenario. Right. And be like, girl, what's up? Like, clean up your stuff. Can you can you not see us? We're in a two by four room. Yeah. We can't live like this. I had a roommate who was pretty dirty. And not dirty, just messy. Mm -hmm. You just gotta tell her like, hey, clean up, I'm not living like this. Eventually, if you just like, this is a suggestion, a weird suggestion, but if you put all of her stuff on her bed, mm -hmm. she just can't sleep, or his bed, yeah. I mean, they're bound to clean it up eventually. And you know what? You know what's a really good thing to say? Listen, I found ants the other day. Ew, like yeah, any, that'll get any them sort real of disgusting quick. <laughs> little thing. Like, yeah, well, I'm sure that room will be yeah. like top of the Empire State Building spotless. That's very in true. In two seconds. <laughs> Well, that's all the time we have left for AM advice, but please submit your questions that you want answered in the box outside of Plangier. We want to answer any questions that you need on anything, any topic at all. Yeah, well, it has been a pleasure, as usual, getting to hear your questions and tell you a little bit about what's going on and what's going on on campus and in the entertainment world. And a special thank you to Ashley for spending your time with me. Always. Tune in for more A&M in the AM on Good Morning Mammoth. See you next time. Solid.